start to wrap it around here. One, two, and it's very important not to speak right now. Three, try your best to do it evenly. Four, it needs to be tight, but this looks like it's going to cut up your circulation. I want to thank everybody for joining us in uh, this huge simcha. It's such an uh, incredible bringing together of people from so many different walks of life. And it's something that really exemplifies our family and our friends. And, you know, I was telling people that, uh, you know, there, there's a traditional food we eat in Shabbos, we call it a cholent. And it's kind of like a pot, and there's a little bit of everything thrown in there, kind of like a stew. And uh, this morning I felt like I was sitting in the cholent pot. And uh, everything was like a little bit crazy, and I felt like I was in a comedy movie, and just total craziness in my mind, at least from my point of view. But uh, on the other point, it was like everything thrown together inside a cholent pot. And uh, it tasted really good. It was sweet, it was warm, and uh, it was really beautiful. And uh, it uh, means a lot to me. So um, just want to, again, thank everybody for joining me in particular to thank my wife. She's an uh, incredible important part of my, of my life and uh, I uh, appreciate everything and especially putting together this beautiful sofa. So um, we're here in honor of she. Is she here? Okay. okay. <laughs> this week's Parsha, Parsha's Hazinu, is a poem that tells the history of the Jewish people. Poetry is used when we want to say something that is deep and important. The poem of Zinu isn't just a history. It tells us the deeper meaning of our history. Uh, I would like to find the central meaning of Hazinu and see what it could teach us about becoming Bar Mitzvah. The opening pasukim of the poem compare Moshe's teaching to rain and dew and to, ha to heaven. Torah itself is compared to rain and water since it gives life. In the Gemara Tanis, it speaks of what is called Gevuros Geshaman, the power of rain. The Gemara explains that the power of rain is in the fact that it is divided up into little drops, so when it falls, it waters flowers, grasses, and trees. And it doesn't harm them and can be absorbed easily. So the power of rain is in its gentleness. The Hassan Sofer says that this is in the nature of Torah, that even when it's powerful and critical, it's gen it is gentle. We can see the same principle at work later in Ha'azinu. Moshe describes the way Hashem found the Jewish people in the desert, surrounded them, protected them, and revealed himself to them. It gives us the poetic image of an eagle that approaches its nest when there are young chicks. The eagle doesn't enter suddenly, it hovers and flaps its wings and gradually settles on the nest. Rashi explains that even though the eagle is the most powerful bird, it uses its power in the most gentle way and according to what its chicks can bear. Rashi says that this is how Hashem relates to Am Yisrael. He revealed himself in at Sinai, but only to the degree that the, Jew, that the Jewish people could bear. We see all this from see from all of this essential principle of Torah that true power shows itself in the greatest gentleness. We see this in an image of a rain in the of the eagle. This is how Hashem relates to his creatures. We have a central mitzvah to resemble Hashem. Yidome el Hashem. Just as Hashem is merciful and kind, so we should be merciful and kind and act with gentleness in our relationships with each other. As a bar mitzvah, I would like to use this principle to guide me in my practice of halachos, of halacha and all mitzvahs between myself and others. This is the way my parents have taught me, and this is the way we can spread the t beauty of Torah in the world. The Zohar describes a bar mitzvah like the day of Matan Torah. 
where the Jewish people first received the Torah and its vote. My question is, how can Yushia, a 13-year-old boy, possibly carry the weight of the entire Torah? Parshas Vayelech includes the commandment for every Jew to write a song for themselves. Now write down this song for yourself and teach it to the children of Israel. The 11th century biblical scholar Rashi says this Pasuk is referring to the following Parsha, your Bar Mitzvah Parsha, Parsha's Hazinu. Writing our own Sefer Torah is the final of the 613 commandments. Why would, we, why would we be required to write our own song and then have to sing it? And how is the requirement to write our own song the same as the requirement to write our own Sefer Torah? Shia, you were named after your grandfather, my father, Yehoshua. He came to America by himself when he was a teenager and dedicated his life to writing his own Sefer Torah, making the Torah personal through his writing and his music and giving others the opportunity to do the same. Last month, a man named Pavel Greenberg contacted me with some questions about your grandfather. He sent me a song that your grandfather wrote called My Entire which means my dearest love. My is stronger than life as his yearbook quote when he was graduating from high school. I remember being your age, trying to understand what that meant and not understanding it. Being your mother has taught me the meaning of Uncle Beryl's quote. Knowing you, your beautiful smile, your caring nature, your love of learning Torah and sharing it with others has taught me about the most powerful reality that exists. Your grandfather's first play that he wrote was titled when you believe. Love gives us the power to know that anything is possible, that even if we feel like, feel like it, we are never alone. My wish for you is that you will use this knowledge to write your own song that will help light up the world. 
Mazel Tov Shia, we love you.